Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the From the Back Tees podcast, a podcast that is still and always from the back tees. I'm old man Jerry Lou, and I'm back in the saddle. And with me as always is Zach and Nolan. Fellas, how are we doing tonight? Guess who back? Back Dude. again. <laughs> doing pretty Everybody good. How's back. Been, have you gotten the conclusion on uh, what illness you're suffering from? Uh, lethargy, mostly. Um, no, I, uh, what is the Rona? Uh, well, hell no. Like, uh, essentially what I was telling Nolan before we started the show, I, about every six months, I have just, like, stomach issues because I don't diet or treat myself properly whatsoever. And this was one time when, I mean, I've gone to the ER before and they, you know, they take care of me, everything gets uh, squared away. But this was one time where I'm like, F that, I'm not going to the ER this time because I don't want to sit there getting scrubbed for 72 hours and getting out three days later. And that's best case scenario. So, needless to say... Here I am. I'm back. You guys kicked a lot of ass with Seabass. I really appreciated uh, the interview. I hope you guys all uh, watched it. It was our first on YouTube, eh? eh? Oh, yeah. And did you see the what the bump we gave Seabass? He now has a feature on the Golf Channel on CBS. <laughs> a big from the back tees bump. <laughs> yeah. Golf Channel tomorrow oh. at 1030 talking oh. about his uh, musical talents. That's true, yeah. Now, so so uh, fill me in and, and some people who might have missed the interview a little bit. Uh, what musical talents is he going to be displaying for the golf channel? Big pianist. I, I'm aware of the size of his unit, but I mean, other than that, uh, does he play any other instruments other than the piano? <laughs> totally set him up for that. <laughs> I know. I think <laughs> he's <you> heard. <laughs> he's got a little guitar action going, too, I think. Ah. Well, yeah, because I only caught part of the video on Twitter, so um that being said uh hey it's good to see you guys back uh we uh we want to keep bringing you the show folks regardless of the situation the world is in we still want to not necessarily bring you distractions or mirth or merriments but at the same time you tune in for a reason and we want to you know i mean this is cathartic and helpful for us too it's just the bad news is when things like this shut down the world and sports is affected and or or, or, or events are turned off that provide that we provide certain amount of like uh, illicit coverage for what do we do what do we talk about when there's no golf zach uh we're greatly running out of things to talk about i mean yesterday there was some yeah it was last night there was some pretty exciting news with phil bringing up potentially a match 2.0 we'll get to that ah uh, yes i know today my greatest joy on the social media was seeing clay travis tweet did anyone see that I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not. Fill me in. Clay, Clay Travis tweeted out, if PGA wanted to get really smart, set up a 64 golfer NCAA tourney style bracket, golfer versus golfer, head to head with seeds, let everyone, out, let, let everyone fill out the bracket and play all the way to crowning a champ who'd win a massive payday. So I wrote, what a brilliant idea, Travis. Wish someone thought of this. Could even have Dell sponsor it or something. <laughs> yeah you're uh, very on the nose with the dell remark there brilliant yeah clay travis always bringing us entertainment in these times i oh, love that guy love that guy so yes it's good to be back good to see you guys and uh nolan uh well uh, horrible segue let me grab the wheel again real quick uh we put out some uh twitter feelers out there just to see if you all wanted to bs about anything golf related or anything related at all and we got some responses. The first several in a salvo response you got was from Nolan in a DM that I just thought I was texting Zach going like, oh my God, our boy's more popular than us. Look at this. <laughs> because oh, he was yeah. saying like, here's another DM. Here's another DM. Here's another DM. I thought it was Zach. I'm just like, hell yeah, this is what we do. But no, no, no. It was uh, yeah, Nolan's no, big time. No one's, uh, yeah, oh, no one's got a, I mean, no one's got another podcast. Yeah, I mean, no, very big time. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, just hold on a second. I'm, I'm just emceeing an Office Trivia League uh, inaugural uh, event tomorrow night. No big deal. But uh, <clears throat> uh, Nolan. No big deal. We, I got a couple questions on Twitter. We'll save uh, some of the good ones for uh, bigger uh, talking points. But do you want to pepper in anything you got from your buddies? I mean, you can share their names if you want to, too. Of course, of course. I'd do love to. Um, let's go at jlule36. Um, wants to know. Should golf be acceptable to play during this social distancing age we are in currently? And I can uh, lead off with saying, of course it should be. I've been golfing during this social distancing. I am still healthy, knocking on wood here, wherever I can find something. Um, and, I mean, if one sport were to survive this 
it's pretty obvious that it would be golf. I mean, they they put these little like cup. I don't I don't even know what to call them, but basically, so your ball doesn't fall all the way down to the hole. Sometimes piece it lifts out. Ball, right? Yeah, sometimes it it lifts out back. Like you can see your ball fit. Like if it if it's gonna be a lip in, it's not going in because it'll mm-hmm. like turn the corner and kind of like bounce out and you're like well that was good right i don't know right. well it's better than having the raised cups i mean i saw uh, kip henley weighed in on twitter on something pretty good where it said like we saw a guy would have had an ace but it really bounced off the cup and he said that he's like that's a hard no and i just like that I, that sucks but that's just the way it is i mean uh, bannon dunes had like a little foam core down at the bottom uh, near the bottom where you put the flag stick in and yeah when the ball rolled in there it probably only sank to about the equator maybe 10 percent above the equator of the golf ball so it was very easy to fish out or do whatever if you were me i wasn't making many putts those rounds so <clears throat> I, I didn't have to touch nothing so yeah it was a good fallback for me because we had recently uh punched our green so you know there's that plinko style putting surface but if it if it lipped out, it'd be like, oh yeah, that was good, right? <laughs> I had to oh, I, I get that because my my club, the Elks Club, just punched their greens the day after they announced the club was closed. So golf for me is uh, dried up a little bit. I mean, to answer your uh, your mate's question there, it's tough for me because the resort where I work, Bandon Dunes Golf Resort, has it's like it's it was like you're allowed to walk into Disneyland, but all the rides are turned off and you can't buy any food and you can't go into the gift shop. So it's like, well, so what's the point of like of any of this? And then the club where I'm a member at, they're closed too. So there's like a couple of public courses around here I can play that are still open. Because yes, this is still socially acceptable. I think some people out there are just jealous. Sorry. I mean, it, that, that's why I look at people who like to ride bikes, you spantards, and get in a car. Okay? It's whatever. It's, you pick your hobbies. But when it comes to golf, we're blessed enough that this should be a hobby, much like how hiking or just outdoorsing in general in most rural places shouldn't be an issue. So... I mean, if, you're, if your boy's saying uh, that this is a good – I don't know if he was asking or he was proclaiming it was a good thing. I say it's a good thing. I'm, I'm kind of bummed out right now that it's been down here in Southern Oregon. It's been raining for four days straight. I can't even – I'm trying to make this chipping hole in my front yard, but it's been – I can't go outside and uh, make any videos or screw around. That's why all the content's dried up. I mean, I just want to get out and swing a club. doesn't matter. What say you, Zach? I think uh, golf needs to be played, like – I do think it's crazy that some courses are shutting down. My course around here is shut down. It basically leaves nothing to do, and now I'm stuck bored out of my mind like the rest of the world. The elevated cup I'm not the biggest fan of because the poor people who get, would have gotten hole-in-ones now just have to live with that little bit of doubt in their mind. And you guys know I'm a big hole-in-one guy. <laughs> Huge, like the biggest I know. <laughs> I am. I don't have any, but when I do, I might be quitting. <laughs> no because when you get when you get one you get two brother remember oh, they, they have it real good. Um, I, I was due that's why this coronavirus came around is because this guy jerry Lou was golfing too hot all of a sudden had two aces in like three months the next thing you know we gotta we gotta shut this thing down shut it down <laughs> is that a top flight you had in your hand no it was a callaway super soft uh with a with a big old smiley face on it and it has the date from when it was won by somebody else years ago <laughs> <laughs> You play crappy balls at the Elks because uh, the creek there sucks. The second your ball looks at the creek, it's gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jeff, so, thank, thanks for your question. Uh, Jerry, I think you got – let's dial up uh, one that we got on Twitter yeah. for the next one. Yeah, we had uh, two here. One's going to be a bigger subject that we're going to address in a little bit that uh, uh, Zach touched on a little bit already. I'm going to see how many times I can say a little bit in a sentence. But first, we're going to get to Alex from – course of life at course of life one he was uh, nice enough to come onto uh, our podcast and i was on his and they kind of do the same stuff we do i mean we're pretty lockstep they start talking about golf it devolves into sports and pop culture maybe a little profanity thrown around no feelings hurt we all go home but alex asked and this is a pretty good question because he's this involves math this involves very specific numbers and very specific terms and he put an emoji afterwards that sums it all up but uh, alex's question is over under two and a half majors that get played this year and he had the emoji with just like the flat mouth zach what do you think the uh, over under two and a half majors played this year for I under i don't think the masters gets played at all unfortunately it's looking less and less likely uh i also think the pga championship is not going to get played mm-hmm. yeah it's uh i'd be no- 
I feel like the betting odds are the under is a very heavy favorite at this point. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I feel like with every day, hell, with every hour that grows, maybe it's just the cabin fever, just everything not happening that mounts up. But I do feel like every day that nothing happens, everything does get pushed back. And then, I mean, Nolan, what do you think? Um, I would agree on the under, but I would disagree with Zach in saying – I think if anything does get played, it's going to be the Masters in that Ooh. praying, man, that it happens in the November, October time frame and we get a little fall out of Augusta National. That'd be pretty sweet. But I don't, I don't really see anything else really. And is this question by, by the end of 2020? Or is like, what if the season wraps around? And we- uh, To clarify, I should have put a button on that. I'm going to assume for Alex that uh, we're talking the end of this calendar year. Like, because like, the PGA Tour has the benefit of like, baseball of having a season contained within a year. It doesn't like oh, snake or overlap or anything like that. And <clears throat> I am so glad you said that, Nolan, because I kind of like agree a little bit with you, agree a little bit with you, and disagree with you, and disagree with you in that I, I really don't think the Masters is going to get played this year because – even though there's been talk of rescheduling and we even had Peter Costas uh, mentioned it a few episodes ago, I'm really trying to think of what the ecological impacts are of that golf course that time of year in Georgia. Now, I don't know too, I'm not too specific to weather patterns or what temperatures do that course, but that course is meant to have the, the Masters be played at date X. The course shuts down at date Y, like a month or two months later. And then the course goes under a lot of work for the next like six to nine months or whatever it is to get back to Augusta time. So if they're playing a tournament all of a sudden in the fall, I just don't know how the course's next two years of history, just like day-to-day calendar history is going to shape up. I, I really do think that maybe if they put all their efforts and move everything into just having just the Masters as the one major this year, that could work. But over under for me, I think I'm going to go with the, the under, I'm going to take a soft under, though. I, I mean, I get, yeah. I'm a, I would take a hard under, man, because I I'd think at, hard mo- under. at most at most we get two. We might get – Okay, well, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try plant the knife in a soft under right here and try to pluck right under the, the knob and hit – we're not getting the Masters, I don't think. And like you said, we're not getting the PJ. But I really don't see why we couldn't get the other two still. They, they, they're very rotational. They're, uh, the USGA uh, governs the U.S. Open, and then the, the Open Championship, the world governs that one, not the PGA or the USGA, so they can do whatever they want to. I mean, I say that flippantly. But regardless, I think those two majors can still stand. That's why I'm saying I, it's going to be under. I'm taking the under, but I'm, I'm giving, I think we're going to see two majors this year. Oh, it's, some crazy. Way it's crazy that, like, a year ago, this would not be, like, a thing that we would even be contemplating just not having a golf major. And now we're like, we might have two golf majors this year. Guys, we're like, we're like two weeks away from when the Masters should have been. It's like starting to like ache and nag at me right now. And it's, 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 like, it's like a weird form of a graveyard, huh? Where it's like, we're not, we're not walking through it. It's the, the, the calendar walks through us right now. There's your title for the episode, yeah. Zach. It's... It, it, we whether we have to deal with this no matter what like it feels like it was a week ago this started or a year ago when this started or whatever but it's still time is still chugging along at the same pace and and Nolan until you said that I was like oh my god I had realized that they would have been the masters right around the corner like that and and it's still something that I on one hand I'm like oh I have to come to grasp that on the other hand I'm like it's still gonna pass it's just gonna pass like everything else we're, we're gonna miss so much I'm pissed that we're missing so much GD baseball. My girlfriend paid for the MLB season ticket package, and we got to watch oh, two spring training games. 180 bucks for two spring training games. Oh, that's brutal. <clears throat> they're going to gonna reimburse some of that or something, right? Oh, 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 oh you are so nice. I am so glad you said that because that is exactly what I said to her because she said that, and she's a nice person. But I says, out of all the institutes out there, they're going to take care of you or reimburse you, MLB, has tortoises in their accounting department at best. You think they're going to restitute anybody? The IRS is ready to cut checks faster than MLB. Are you kidding me? But do, you know, do you know what golf event is still going on, though? There's a golf oh, that, event today. In Florida, wasn't the Outlaw Open going on? No, the, the Outlaw, Outback, tour, Outlaw Tour. The Outback Tour or Outlaw Tour. Maybe the Outlaw yeah. Tour or Outback. I said but Outlaw Open. It's that out was somewhere going on in Arizona. <laughs> it's out somewhere. <laughs> that was going on in Arizona. And do you know who is competing in it? No idea. Uh, 
not not just anyone, our most popular guy, Reed Martin. <laughs> oh. Reed? Oh yeah. Oh. He played in it. Oh, I got I, I I should text Reed. I thought I thought sorry Reed, I thought your phone went uh went debunk uh went uh like out of service with all this uh uh when we were off the grid. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> wasn't wasn't his best effort. Moving on to ra- moving on to round 2. What did he shoot? I just know he was plus three through eight. I didn't get to hear the rest, but it didn't sound good. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want Nolan, to uh, you, Nolan, you've been playing a lot. Of, okay, deal. But Nolan, you've been playing a lot of uh, golf lately. I'll let you uh, estimate it in your own words. But uh, plus three through eight, how would that make you feel? We know Zach would already be like, you know, getting picking which sleeve would have what uh, logo on it. But I mean, Nolan, if you're plus, plus three, three through eight, 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 I'd be living the life. Um, that's a that I'd be feeling pretty good because <laughs> uh, I'm a I'm a late bloomer in the round. Yeah, and, you, you you just bloom late. Yes, so I'd be feeling pretty good. Um, you know what? Sometimes I start hot and sometimes I end hot. It's like somewhere in the middle, it gets a little messy. So if I'm plus three through eight, I'm getting right in the thick of things. But that's not a bad number at all. Hmm. I can dig it. Uh, Zach, I mean, Zach just said he'd be loving life. I was like, yeah, Zach, if you were plus three through eight, you'd think you were already on tour. Like, you think you just won three of the four legs of the Grand Slam. You're just like, I'm plus three through eight. I'm walking around like that gif of Conor McGregor where he's strutting. I mean, that, that'd be Zach right there. <laughs> that's not even a joke, though. Like, you guys are laughing. I would literally be having, nope. like, if I was no, plus I'm... three through eight in a mini tour event, I would be, like, calling people out and, like, chirping everyone. Yeah, I okay. know. I'm saying this in earnest, Zach. I, Zach, I'd be on your bag. I'm saying this in 100% earnest here. I'm, I'm on your side. All I need is to par the first hole or shoot the same yeah. score as the guy I'm playing with on the first hole, and then I can just chirp him the whole time. Remember that time after hole one we were all tied up? <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. That's, that's, like, that's like my buddy Slim. Shout out uh, 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 Slim. He uh, played in a pro-am qualifier in Vegas about five, six months ago. And Chase Kepka was in his group, and Slim shot 70 or 71, and Chase shot 73. And I said, you could word this the right way. You beat Kepka in a pro-am round. You, I mean, he did. He, he shot a clean, like, one under. The, the other guy shot one over. Perfect. I mean, just yeah, it was, it, a Kepka at the height of <laughs> Kepka's Kepkiness. The good thing about all this, Zach, is you have plenty of time to sharpen up those those irons and uh, tune in that driver for for your first mini tour uh, adventure. You guys saw my exactly. chipping video. Eight for a hundred, pretty good. That was really good. That was actually it. See, and folks, I wish you could see the text thing that went on before Zach was about to achieve whatever endeavor he was setting forth. Because there were a lot of there were a lot of different plans going on, but <clears throat> he um he really really. Uh, like he sells himself short folks he really really does and, and, and he didn't he wouldn't even predict the eight out of a hundred i mean that's that was it was an impressive performance the yeah. problem was the green seemed to have been slanted towards the hole when you chip from the middle but when you chip from the side somehow it would go right away from the hole so i don't know something was up sounds like it's a green issue perhaps yeah. uh, i think it <laughs> was <laughs> probably the club's fault well, listen, hey, I, I should talk. We're all stuck inside, and I'm waiting for the weather to break so I can make goofy golf videos for you. So it, it's my time's coming. Don't you worry. I, 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 I've, I've got the clip loaded to just the, the friggin' chambers jammed. Uh, Nolan, do you have another <laughs> – what's that? The YouTube videos are coming. Uh, uh, Nolan, you got another thing from one of your mates? I do, I do. Um, Great. But... What's that? I said great sentence, Jerry. I'm like, you got another thing from one of your mates? <laughs> <laughs> and I said do-do. So uh, my buddy CJ, um, at CJ underscore Willette, um, chimed in here. And I, I like this question. It's a you know, fun little one we got here. Um, but if you could travel anywhere in the world um, with one celebrity, and we're going to say you're quarantined with this said celebrity for two weeks, who would it be? It, well, hold on, but it was travel the world was the first part of it. So is it a who, were to be, and where? So you, can choose, you can choose where you are, and you can choose who you're with, but you're quarantined in a house. And we can say this is a, a nice house. Um, I don't know. What, what do you it can guys be whatever house it? you want it to be, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any thoughts on that? I know this, that's, this is a very broad question, but um, we are – I'd like broad. to actually last. To see how genuine <laughs> you guys are. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 
Nolan, do you have an answer real quick? I have an, I have an answer, but I also got something in my throat. <clears throat> I mean, the first the first one that comes to mind is Damian Lillard, but I don't want to take him away from his his family time right now. You know, NBA players, they don't get to spend too much. Oh, this is adorable. In a land of hypotheticals, Nolan's thinking about his family. This is the you, – you're the nicest okay. guy in here on brand. <laughs> so, See, okay. okay, you know what? On the flip side, my answer would be me and Hunter S. Thompson would hop on a, uh, a Learjet and, you, and we would be somewhere holed up in a farmhouse in the south of France, like stuck on like 20 acres of just property. It's just us like shooting guns and doing drugs and, and like seeing how much you can drink before you like pass out on your feet. I mean, just like goofy stuff like that. <clears throat> you guys are That's, like, that is... you guys are the most disingenuous people ever. I would No, be... wrong word, wrong word. You should have said opposite, not disingenuine. What are you talking about? I don't know what the word is. You're the opposite of genuine. But what yeah, but dis- disingenu- disingenuine means like, like we're, we're we're placating each other. Wait, wait, wait! Before you say your answer, let's let's take stabs at what we think Zach's gonna say. <laughs> oh, okay. I, yeah, go I think know. he's gonna go with some hot Instagram model, and he just wants to be the the boyfriend taking pictures all day. Now wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> wait a minute! I was I was thinking along the same lines, but I was thinking like some type of uh, Canadian starlet. Um, is Taylor Swift Canadian? No, no but uh, Shania Twain isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she's like she's like forty. <laughs> Celine Dion. She's like fifty. <laughs> I'm, I'm undercutting it big time. <laughs> yeah, I think she's like sixty. <laughs> Sorry, Celine Dion. <laughs> <It's laughs> All <just> right, <laughs> give it to me. The correct <laughs> answer would be: I would like to be with Kate Upton, living my best ah, life. We were close. The fact that you guys said Hunter S. Thompson, Damian Lillard, not genuine. Kate Upton, better answer. Wait, whoa, okay, now you're comparing, like, apples and avocados here. What are you talking about? Like, I'd say, like, Nolan and I were being very on brand. That, that's as genuine as you can get. And then you yeah. just say, he's like, you guys aren't genuine. I'm better. <laughs> Those are the exact words. He said, you yeah. One Don't man be. with a girlfriend. You got one man who's married, so. It doesn't matter to me. If we put a poll out, <laughs> if we put a well, poll out, right? who would you rather be trapped with? Hunter S. Thompson, Damian Lillard, or Kate Upton? Oh, hey, I don't vouch for – I wouldn't – I don't say no – I don't – hey, look, Zach, I'm with you. Your answer is great and my answer is great. I don't agree with Nolan's at all, okay? I mean, you, you might not see, see part of mine. No, but yours I mean, is just as bad that. as Nolan's. No, we're going to party. I'm not saying, like, we're going to – it's not sexual or nothing. Damian um, Lillard might party. My true answer, because I'm not taking him away from his family, it would be Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> See, now it's, it's getting weird. It's getting weird. <laughs> that one's weird. I guess I got a big man crush on him. <laughs> Guys, it's weird. Well, hey, who Dude. does it? Who does it? Okay. I, I was going to say Zach was going to pick Bieber, but I mean, Biebs is like, he's, he's cool in his heels right now. I do have Bieber fever. Oh, no, easy. That's why you're still in Florida, because you got the Bieber fever. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was, a, that was a great question, CJ. I appreciate it. Um, I don't <laughs> Let's, uh, Zach, do you know what our uh, other or, – or Jerry, what's our other uh, Twitter poll question? I have, I have the next question. Do you have any more from your friends? I got one more. All right, well, here, tease it real quick. I'm going to get some housekeeping out of the way. No one's got another DM. I got one more tweet from my boy, Bullfrog. But real quick, I want to remind everybody that we're brought to you by Sports Travel Podcast Network. They, well, <laughs> they have a great fantasy baseball podcast. It's still cranking out right now, even though baseball is not being played. They got lots of other great podcasts over there. Go check them out where you like to listen to your podcasts, connect to a search bar, and please go to gorsegolf.com. I'm wearing their hat right now, folks. This is their logo. If you can find on Google at Gorse Golf, head covers. Half the price of all these expensive $100 leather head covers out there. They have an Instagram, at Gorse Golf. Check them out. It's nothing but beautiful artwork on there. And if you're listening to this right now and you buy any head covers on there, in the promo or coupon code, we got it for you. From the back tees, all one word saves you 10% off on already cheap and wonderful head covers. So, GorseGolf.com. From the back tees, all one word's the promo code. And remember, if you'd like to send us any extra email questions, please send them to from <clears throat> take two ftbtpodquestions at gmail.com and be sure to say hi to the NSA. Nolan, what does your third goon have to say? Yeah, first I'd just like to say I have seen you wear that hat with that logo many times and never asked you what it's from because I think that is a really sick logo, man. And right on Gorse Golf, that is nice. I love that. 
it's it, they they do really good work. I got I got the hat that you see in my Twitter profile pic that's got the Hawaiian print, and then this one. This is the one I like to wear around town here because uh, where I live, it's full of rednecks, and this passes off really well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Um, so yeah, my last question here from my buddy Ian Coyer, who is in the West Coast, possibly epicenter of uh, this whole COVID-19 thing up in Seattle. Um, at Ian Coyer on Twitter, so um, pretty pretty difficult. Jack, to is that Jack? Yeah, Jack uh, wants to chime in here soon. <laughs> um, but okay, Ian's got a great question for us, guys. You can Sorry, play yeah. any three courses in the world next year. Which three are they? And he specifically said excluding Augusta National because he kind of assumed we would all want to put Augusta National on there. Yeah. So yes. I already, I already bit Nolan's head off uh, earlier saying, like, oh, I thought you said no Augusta. Like, come on, you're allowed to say Augusta. It was his friend. So we already cleared that up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go with this, right? There's so – I mean, the world is our sandbox here, right? So, I mean, you could – you know, Pine Valley, of course, you know, like Cypress, the old course at St. Andrews. I mean, there, boom, three. Like, I'd love to go play, there, play those. Those are two of my three. Sadly, I'm very basic in that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we were we were real stark earlier. Are we all going to be basic bitches on this one? <laughs> I haven't played too many courses. So I feel like, and I haven't played many unique courses either. Well, neither is Nolan, according to an article we're talking about soon. But I uh, go ahead, Zach. That's true. So for sure, the old course, St. Andrews. That's like bucket list material. Pine Valley, I feel like would be a very cool experience. And then probably Pebble. Or abandon one of those two. I feel like now I see so much abandon. I'm like, I gotta play there. Oh, and see, I'd say on the flip side, since you know me, uh, you're 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 you getting out here to abandon is just like right around the corner, technically. Like we're we're just like one quarantine lift away from you golfing here anytime you want to, brother. <laughs> yeah. So Jerry, I don't I don't know if you noticed this, but if you watch the podcast, the intro, did you notice it's abandon in the background? I that looked familiar. I didn't. I, I it was quick. I couldn't catch what hole it was. But yeah, yeah. Also, my my phone was giving me different parts of the podcast to watch and listen to at different times. So I'm still feeling it out. <laughs> that was a little insider detail there for the absolutely. Real Great, that's a nugget. That's an Easter egg, as we like to call exactly. it. Exactly. So I guess for my three courses, um, I'm gonna have to cut and say cut loose and say uh, it had St Andrews Old Course absolutely not I I don't give two craps about the track I just want to go and kiss the bricks because if it wasn't for that golf course there's no guarantee it could have started somewhere else whether it was down the street or in a different country in a different century or different time with different people and that course is giving me with the exception of the four years I lived in Colorado and the six years that I was in the military golf has given me every single paycheck I've had whether I was working uh, tech support for Foresight or being a club pro on the East Coast, or being a caddy like I am now, I, golf is giving me a literal living as well as um, a great hobby. I mean, probably one of my two or three favorite things I like to do, like golf, fish, play video games. It's about about really it. I mean, I don't really fish at all as much as I'd like to. But um, so yeah, I, I I just I always want to go over there, kiss the bricks. How a lot of people like uphold Pebble, where it's like, oh, I got to go stay at Pebble, and I got to go buy a wallet and a shot glass and spend five hundred bucks. Blah, blah, blah. I mean. I feel that same way about St. Andrews or I'd be like, oh yeah, I would definitely go there and buy a hat, buy a polo, buy a head cover. And they're all for me. They're not for anybody else. Cause it's like, oh yeah, this is my $200 foot joy polo that I got from St. Andrews. And it's blue with like no patterns on it. It's just like, it just says like old course right there and that's it. So to make a long answer shorter, hopefully, um, I would have said Pine Valley mostly because of the difficulty and some of the beauty, but regardless, it's, uh, it, it, it's okay. I, I want to go more international. I don't know the names of the courses, but I know New Zealand has a couple really, or Tasmania has a couple really good courses down there in Australia way I'd like to try. And, um, and then Zach, I'll just say for my third one, I'm kind of spinning the Canadian wheel here for you because I wanted to land specifically in one of your provinces. I, as much as I love Cabot, I don't know if as a person like me, not ever being there, if I could pick links over cliffs, without experiencing either one of them. So I'm going to shift over to the other side of the country and say between Chateau Whistler and Banff, I would like to play Banff. Like I want to see, or whatever course has those damn moose on the fairway. Like that is, 
one of the probably both of them. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably yeah. To pick your poison, but uh, needless to say, it's that's one of the things I like about golf is like the older I get, the more I appreciate nature and golf and how it intertwines with each other. And that's like I would say, if you're up in Canada, you don't have to see snow or just be cold or have bad conditions. But oh my God, look, there's a herd of moose or whatever, like a murder of moose. What do you guys call them? Up there? A herd of moose. Herd a moose. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> your pet moose is everywhere. Moose and <laughs> moose. <Moosen, right? laughs> Moose yeah, that's, what, that's what Brian Reagan said. That's right. Mo- with the boxing. The boxing and the. the yeah. So, uh, what friend? I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was my buddy. What, what friend? Go ahead. Nolan. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, I've, been, I've, been, I've been blaming Nolan for freezing all night, and, uh, and he finally now did. Now he's frozen? Well. That's oh, no. Oh, oh, wait, I hear him. Back. Hello? I'm back, guys. Okay. So, so what's your yeah, Ian Coyer. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. Ian Coyer, yeah, thanks for the great question. I think my three would definitely be St. Andrews, so I'm glad we can all agree on one. That's that's kind of cool. Maybe we should go together. That's big for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, too, uh, would like a little international flavor, and I can't decide between Trump. I think Trump that – uh oh, we just know. Oh, you know what? This the, Nolan, we got sabotaged because right when you said Trump, everything fell apart. Yeah, <laughs> it's like all of a sudden he said, "I want to go play Trump." It's like that's right. <laughs> that's just how it is, man. Um, Sorry, you um, know, it's say everything. Repeat one, everything like Trump. Yeah, I uh, the uh, Trump International Aberdeen Scotland. Okay, Scotland. Yeah, uh, I think. Sort of home Uh-oh. is Rada. How are you guys have seen that at all? Has this has this happened to me before, Zach? No. Like, I mean, no, and we're losing you with the Wi-Fi. Seriously? Oh, now you seem to be pretty good. Yeah, you just answer everything in one word. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Well, okay, but we'll. we'll Everything's been fine with uh, with Nolan uh, up until now. Zach was having problems earlier, but we powered through it. So, we what I got out of that Nolan was uh, there was Trump, Scotland, um, 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 uh, swim the channel, take over, um, kilts, accident, <laughs> and Wolf Creek in Nevada. Ah, there it is. And then and then you will you will honeymoon in Wolf Creek, Nevada. <laughs> okay. Well, we're. Hey, listen, everyone who hasn't punched a hole in their dashboard yet or uh, who hasn't, like, switched off of YouTube, we appreciate sticking through. And uh, we'll, we'll keep this toasty. And, uh, and uh, we got a couple things to talk about. Um, Nolan wrote a really uh, interesting article that was having uh, lots of type of, I'm not going to say backlash, just lashes. And uh, we got a lot of new social media platforms that Zach wants to talk about. But the last question that we have from our Twitter crowd is from my coworker, Jeremiah Bullfrog. You can find him at Bullfrog111 on Twitter. And he says, <clears throat> would a broadcast of a quarantine match between Tiger and Phil be a, be a good thing for us or a great thing for us? Zach, I mean, I'm going to ask Zach first because, Nolan, we know what camp you uh, have a flag in. Um, it's not Phil. Uh, so, Zach, what, what would your thughts be on an overall uh, on a, a Tiger-Phil uh, 2.0 match? I would watch anything at this point. I would watch Smiley Kaufman against that guy who I bet to beat Smiley Kaufman against oh, you. Oh, God. It's, it's just fill in the blank. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Any form of was, live sport I am in. It was like, it was like Mark Kalkavecchia beats, uh, beats uh, like Smiley Kaufman or oh something. Oh, my God. Brilliant. What a match that would be. Oh, yeah. God. I, I would pay for any of them. I yeah, do I'm think surprised too, yeah. I heard they're going to be doing it pay-per-view, or that was the rumor. I hope not, because... I mean, these guys are loaded. Like, do something. Help all the people out who are in quarantine. I also don't get, why don't they just do it on TV? Like, every other event. TV's so schism now. Like, I was just looking at the, with the girlfriend uh, at the new Hulu package or whatever, and, it, and it's like 55 bucks a month. And I'm just like, why don't I just bundle whoever we're getting our internet from for an extra 50 bucks a month and just get, like, a cable box? I mean, Nolan, what do you think about Tiger Phil 2.0? Well, I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, I don't <laughs> care about anyone else who's playing, but it's just to see Tiger in a red shirt would be pretty sweet. <laughs> I heard they might be playing with a partner. That's the rumor. Who would you guys want to see them with? 
Well, now I saw somebody say uh, Tiger and Patrick Reed would make a good team, which would be – it would be like, well, listen, let me put it this way. We have to shoehorn Patrick Reed in there, don't we? Well, I said Tiger and DeChambeau against Phil and Patrick Reed. Wouldn't that be a blast? I think some – and I saw somebody say uh, Fowler-Mickelson versus uh, Reed Woods. Yeah. I mean, it's I, – I, you know, okay, look, okay, okay. All right, here's the question on the table right now. Uh, 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 Nick, uh, Zach, put a graphic behind me or whatever. It's uh, who – what – if Patrick Reed were to be the, the first teammate, would he be with Phil or would he be with Tiger? I would say, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I got to – oh, Nolan just almost had a conniption there. I got to ask him. Nolan, what do you think? <laughs> that he'd be with Tiger. Um, gosh, Was that I don't know. Something? What, what happened? You just almost keeled over. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to be with – I don't want Tiger to be with him, but I would assume he would be with Tiger in that circumstance. Zach? Yeah, I would say Tiger. I think Tiger likes the guy. Takes him under his wing. But you want to hear my suggestion for a great match? How good would this be? Tiger and Phil. Well, I don't know who would be with who, but you have Tony Romo and Steph Curry. One with each. Um, can, I take, can, I sub out, can, I, can I sub out Curry with Smoltz? No. <laughs> oh, God. You, I get it. I appreciate you want the household names, but I want to win the damn thing. No, so you I'll can take, not. I'll take, some other middle, I'll take some other middle-aged white guy who's really good at golf. Okay, fine. <laughs> not you, know who, you know who's really good at golf is uh, Aaron Hicks, but he, he got a big injury. Center fielder for the Yankees. No, no, I know. I was, I was about to uh, say, like, Nolan, you don't have to tell all of us who Aaron Hicks is. Uh, He's uh, yeah. obviously the starting center fielder for the Yankees. And, I uh, even know Aaron. Not Hicks. even a platoon hitter or anything uh, with uh, with really big splits. Uh, what was his average last year? Mashes against he lefties. I think he's frozen again. Yeah, he's he's frozen on a weird smile. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he mashes against lefties. I know that. What about Fitz? He does you have Fitz? He does. Who? Larry Fitzgerald. He's very good. Uh, I don't know. Hey, no one's back. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it just it just freezes at the best time for anyone's argument. I mean, this is probably happening to me, and I don't even know it. <laughs> no, you're not freezing at all. That's why it's weird. No one's never had problems with this internet. Yet. Uh, it's sweeping the nation. <laughs> yeah, no one. Probably some virus. Remember to uh, pay your bills, no one. So, well, now, real quick, going back to, like, uh, what you said, Zach, or how somebody said it was a pay-per-view or whatever. Wasn't the last one pay-per-view? Yeah. So, whoopee-doo, what's, what's the big deal? Well, I don't know. I feel like people are much more uh, money crunched right now, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's the least they could do. You have, you have these players donating lots of money to help out. It's not like, first of all, they might not even be losing. Why not just hold it with Golf Channel and make their money off advertisers? It must not be a big difference, if any. Right. Uh, now, now, clue me into something, Zach, because I, I feel like I might have just taken too much of a drive-by swipe at this. This Was this Bullfrog's question? of saying, are they going to do the Tiger Phil quarantine match? Or has Phil, because I know he said a couple things, has Phil tipped his cap saying, or tipped his hand in that, saying this, this match is going on during the quarantine? Because my whole notion is, oh, we're just talking about when the next match is. I, and so I, I just assume it's going to be in like November or something. Oh, so no, yeah. it sounds like it's going to be soon, like during the uh, quarantine. Yeah. I'm, I'm only two-thirds stupid, not all the way. So just making sure. I hope. I, no, but now that you say it, it's it, – it wouldn't surprise me if they're like, well, we weren't talking about now. We were talking about six months from now. We were just promoting it. Great time. Everyone's on their phone. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was the first thing that hit me. That's why a lot of ads and, like, headlines do and don't work on me because I, I saw that right away going like, yeah, no shit, they're going to have a, a 2.0 match. Of course they are. And then when I saw Bullfrog's question saying, like, hey, are we going to have a match during this quarantine? I'm like, now that's a good question. But I, I didn't know if they were baking it that way. Yeah. 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 No one, no one, you want to say something? Oh, no one's trying to say something. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was going to possibly. Who knows, though? Mm, yeah, no, great insight, Nolan. All we got from <laughs> you is, uh, you know, it's going to be. Who knows, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I feel so You have Nolan call in to give his insight, a live call. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right and i just oh god everyone's looking at what we're looking at for once so they just see his face like mid-explanation 
I don't think, I think people can only see whoever's talking. Oh, there you are, Nolan. Nolan, turn off your Wi-Fi and then turn it back on again. He might not have got that. <laughs> I, think no oh, I, got that. Being, I think Nolan just thinks we're being incredibly rude. He talks and then like he gets back on and we're not saying anything. Or we just <laughs> ignore him. <laughs> and I don't know what he sees when he comes back to Earth. I mean, I don't know how, what the view is from re-entry there. <laughs> This is all going to hit Now you look like you're going at full speed. I've, I've been hearing everything you guys have been saying, so I don't know <laughs> what's going on. Okay, well, good. So he knows we're not dicks, at least. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to finish your sentences. <laughs> so oh now it seems pretty good. Well, listen, I tell you what. I'll, I'll flip-flop these things I got written down here just to make sure Nolan can work out uh, the last little wrinkles there. But, Zach, um, but, but let's put a pin in that whole uh, Tiger match thing, the Tiger Phil match thing, because I feel like that we can ruminate on that a lot more down the road and we will have time to. Uh, we have new social platforms and visions, so to speak, for From the Back Tees. And, uh, and there's been a lot of great internal talks going on, and you guys aren't going to hear diddly about that. But, Zach, why don't you clue us into what we've actually presented to people so far and what our little goals are? Yeah, so uh, we're planning to expand from the back tees to multiple sports. A little clap for myself. Uh, we're going to be having baseball, basketball, hockey, football, college sports, and entertainment all under the From The brand. You could check it out on our Twitter. And uh, hopefully we're going to grow those. And we got some great writers. I know most of the team is going to be writing about different sports and hopefully we're going to add a couple of people in each sport and we should give you guys the same uh humor mixed with some golf knowledge and sports knowledge not golf knowledge but there yeah, you that's not all golf anymore. About the saints or the montreal canadians yeah who knows for all you people who hate the dodgers which is most of you i might write something about the dodgers yeah. who knows yeah who knows so um yeah <clears throat> that's uh, that sounds really cool and not to say like we're <clears throat> i mean whether we are allowed or not or not that we're allowed or trying to or not trying to say it but i mean folks if you look at like how barstool sports did it they didn't start like they just got estimated a ton of money and they didn't start two or three years ago they started back in 2005 and they've grown into being the media conglomerate that they are and they cover just because it says barstool and sports in their title that's just a catchy lingo to me now. I mean, that's just passe verbiage for all of us. They cover, I got the Harvey Weinstein uh, verdict news from Barstool. I mean, it's like, I mean, the, Barstool is legitimate I wasn't on all. I'm sure where that was going. Well, but, but you saw where it went. It went well. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely something like, it's not just because golf isn't going on. Nothing's going on right now at a certain, to a certain degree, but we have a great team with a lot of great eclectic expertises that we'd like to uh, showcase hopefully. And Zach, and nobody's more uh, equipped or better at than Zach to uh, helm that ship, in my opinion. Thank you. So, so Nolan, are you with us, sir? Do we have you back on? Man, I hope so. No, I hear yeah. him. What's going on? <laughs> no, no, we don't have him. Oh, okay. Well, Allie's lost him for good. Uh, so with that in mind, he uh, he has to listen to this episode, all of it, to um, hear what we, uh, we have to say about him right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, now's the time. We could spill the dirt. Well, so so let me ask you then. We'll preface this little question I want to ask you. Um, uh, what? Oh, he said booted. Oh, and there's his uh, eighth grade picture right there. Do you see that? That's what I see at the bottom of the screen there. <laughs> oh, no, I don't see any of it. <laughs> it literally looks like a senior high school picture. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyways, so Nolan wrote an article um, about the, the top 10 courses in Oregon that he has played. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of prefacing before like people want to throw their arrows at him, whether they're deserved or not. But, Zach, when did, he, when did you drop that article for the first time? That and I asked that today. Okay, because he asked me right away. He asked me right away what I thought about the article, and that's why I said what I said right away. I said, nailed it. But then, like, I started texting with him privately, and I'm just like, if I could be honest with you, dog, I, th this reads like top 10 burger places from a vegan's perspective. Like, this is just not, like, this is like, well, like when I started, personal top 10. Which I get, but I mean, I just, I, I warned him from a certain angle, like, there are some guys online, I'm not going to say their names because I do not promote them whatsoever, but, like, 
they're constantly giving their top 10 golf courses they played, and it's like the 10 courses they played in Illinois because they haven't gotten out of Illinois. And they're like a golf trip advisor and a club pro. And then next thing you know, they're having like their top five favorite movies all time. And I'm like, I don't want your opinion just because, like, I, hey, we sorry, Nolan. Uh, we, oh, we you see, see me? We see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you are. So, uh, anyways, uh, Nolan, I was just uh, buttering up Zach about our personal text conversation about how when you, I guess, so I was learning that the article dropped this morning. And then you tweeted me right away asking for my perspective. And then, oh, you can't hear me? No, I, I, he I heard all that. Um, for some reason, my video was not working. I don't know. But yeah, thanks oh. for the refresher. Okay, well, uh, anyways, uh, Nolan, what, what type of – tell us about the article that you wrote. Sure. Uh, here. Uh, heavily, you know – this, this, is good, this is good content. Gary, we may need you to call Nolan and then put it next to the microphone. <laughs> Wait, what, what about me? You can do it to you. <laughs> Let me try it on my phone. We'll see. All okay. Right. See you yeah. soon, Nolan. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing that gets me is that systematically it chewed through you, Zach, and now it's chewing through Nolan, which means at any moment, like, my iPad's just going to catch on fire. Like, I'm just expecting something catastrophic to happen over here. Oh, you're oh just we got a fourth person joining. <laughs> Oh, oh I love what I'm person. looking at right now. I love what I'm looking at right now. I got to take a picture of this. This is great. We got double this more. There you are, though. Better quality. <laughs> hey, he's still, he's still there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, uh, uh, not much. Uh, it takes very little to humor me, folks. Um, <clears throat> so is this uh, any better? It seems to be oh. better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can hear you good now, and um, we see your little avatar uh, of a little uh, egg on another egg. So you don't see no my face. No, but we don't need to. We've done this before. Okay. Now we hey. do. Well, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I'll try to. If this doesn't work, I'll just let you guys take. No, that seems to be working well. Good. So. Yeah, I, I did, from my perspective, the golf courses I've played um, in Oregon. That you played. Make sure yes. you say everyone heard that. Honorable mentions, I listed some that I haven't played because there are some that are very honorable that I should mention. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to throw them in there. Of course, like Band and Dunes is in my honorable mentions. I thought it was kind of good because I didn't, you know, Band and Dunes would probably take up you know a lot of slots in that top 10 so i think it was nice for me to you know show some other courses on here um some people didn't didn't like what i was laying down but that's okay everyone has their opinions um <laughs> but yeah i loved i love some some central oregon golf that's really where i, I love to go go get my fix Prasada ranch is my favorite course um that i've ever played um let alone in oregon so uh, if you haven't if you haven't been to Brasada, find a way to get out there. It's out in the middle of nowhere, Central Oregon. So, what do you I think, stand by your list, Nolan. Fuck no, I, and, and yes, I, I stand by Nolan's list as well because even as I was texting in my opinion, I knew in my head, I'm like, this is Nolan's top 10 that he's played in this one state. I, I, I was keeping that in the very forefront of everything. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I left too many big ones off. Um, I mean, hey, the, some the Prasada Ranch was a great reminder. I actually had not seen or thought about that name in a few years. I haven't played the course myself, but it was always like, "Oh, I heard Prasada's nice." So, uh, it's so, it's so nice, and yeah, I mean, it's a private club, so you got to find a way to get on. Um, but man, the facilities around there are just awesome, and they're they're tricky, right? It's like its own little oasis out there. So, pretty pretty neat little course. See, I, I can't wait to get you mugs to abandon. I mean, like, even if we just play one of the four courses, I just want to see the looks on your faces when – because even Bandon Trails, which is in the woods and not in the ocean, is still gorgeous and an amazing course. And, and like, an Old Mac, which is not on the ocean at all, except for, like, one green. When you get up onto that green, you just kind of freeze. You're like, oh, holy crap. I mean, it's just – it's and, and that's where you're on Sheep Ranch's doorstep. I mean, it's uh, – like Nolan, he's. I mean, I got. I got excuses. My my resort's closed right now. But Nolan, you got. You got to. We got to get you down here for a round of golf. Of course, I will be down there soon. And 
if anyone who is arguing against my list um, wants to put East Moreland in their list, then you got a little something to think about because I'm my friend. East Moreland is like, uh, gosh, have you played East Moreland, Jerry? Or, I have. I, I haven't played. Like I was, I, I did. I was on the personal record with Nolan earlier saying like I've only played half the courses in Oregon, therefore I don't have the stones to write an article like this just because of my exposure is tilted and skewed and, and, and pretty has a lot of holes in it. But East Moreland, I have played before. And, and, I, and didn't I warn you the purists were going to come after you? Like, I was trying to form, like, that text four different ways, and I deleted it all. I'm like, the purists are, the purists are going to – the golf purists. The, the, the golf nerds. Oh, my God. I just – I didn't know how to reward it. I'm just like, you're going to get so much shit because I'm giving you a little bit of shit right now. I mean, I just, I just saw a wave coming from the port bow. I mean, it was going to knock – it was going to capsize you. Yeah, I mean, that, that course is like I, – I don't want to disrespect it or anything, but, I mean – it's, it's old. It is what it is. It's a run-of-the-mill little course. <laughs> hey, green, green. I've never played Langdon Farms, and I've always wanted to. And I know that's your, that's your home track. So, and that's – from what I've seen from the course and heard from the course, that's absolutely a good track. I mean, that's a great course. It's a great course. Um, they always keep it in great condition. It's a public course. Um, it gets a ton of play, like, all year round. So, I mean, the superintendent there is just a wizard, man, to keep that thing in shape. It's always regarded as one of the, the best draining courses around. So, it's not soggy in the winter or spring here in Oregon. Um, and it, unfortunately, just went over a lot of different bunkering, which kind of stripped it of some of its character. And that just literally happened, like, a couple months ago. Oh, I was going to say mentioned a little something about that a while ago yeah unfortunately i didn't wasn't really up on that but it's a way to keep the, the pace of play going um but it's a nice track and um i love it so i, ha I had to put it on there number 10 oh right on i i honestly thought you'd have it in a better ranking i mean but that was just me i mean it's it's nothing it's nothing to, it's not too shabby but i'd say between bandon and like the Willamette valley and Central Oregon, there's really nowhere else that there's golf in the state of Oregon. Like, I can think of one decent course down in Bedford at the very southern part of the state, and that course is good because it's used as an U.S. Open qualifier, and I'm, I'm talking about Centennial. But beyond that, I think ECC, well, that's still in the Willamette Valley, technically. Isn't Eugene the Willamette Valley? It's like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's Eugene to Portland. That's the Willamette Valley, yeah. So it, it, that, that's it, yeah. I mean, you haven't played Tokyo yet. That's kind of that place is so magical. I played there once, like, in 95 when I was a kid that I feel like if I go back there, I would have that same look all over again where I'm just, like, like I look like E.T. walking around the house looking in the fridge. It's like, oh, just, like, what's this? What's this? I mean, it's – Yeah, I mean, there's there's other courses that I'm just thinking of now that I left off. Oregon just has a great list of courses. Sand Pines is down near – Oh, yeah. Well, the artist formerly known as Sand Pines. It's got a different <laughs> name now, but we – I know you're an OG if you call it Sand Pines. Yeah, um, like Widgee Creek is out in C Central Oregon. Oh, um, that's the name I haven't <laughs> heard in 20 years, Widgee Creek. <laughs> it, I played it a couple years ago, and that, that's a nice little public course. I don't know. but this? What's that? It still exists, Widgee Creek? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, that, Zach, that should be our home course. It's just the funniest name, Widgee, W-I-D-G-I, -I, Widgee Creek. <laughs> Solid name. Widgee Sports, here we come. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a lot of Native Americans, like, uh, like the Pawnee in Indiana and everything like that, so. <laughs> but, I, mean, I think we are blessed here in Oregon, though, with the quality of the courses. Absolutely. The, like, I w after I read your article, part of me wanted to just, like, retitle it for you and just call it, like, Nolan's Ten Hidden Gems, because that would strip down all the, like, information or facts of you, like, these are the courses I played, shut up, you all don't, I know what I know, or based off of, like, what you just happen to get around to. I like to joke and say you guys haven't made friends with the guy who worked at Banner Dunes until we met, but I mean, here we are now, so who knows how that could work out for you. It might not have happened ever. You might have had to pay full freight and come on a boys trip years later and, and whatnot. But uh, uh, that being said, it's if you could strip it, like stripping it down to that where it was like 10, 10 little hidden gem courses of Oregon, that's how I received it. And I was like, yes, as an Oregonian, that's how I would repackage this article because that's per I just didn't want to see you get the flack that, like I said, I would give somebody if I saw that article be like, you, you, what? I mean. <laughs> it's all good, good though. Everyone, everyone has their opinions and I respect everyone's opinions for sure. 
That's true. And folks, he, te he texted me the same exact words. So, Beautifully said, you know, Nolan. That, you know, the man of the people. Absolutely. <laughs> so, guys, this, is, uh, this has been a fun episode. We're coming up on about an hour now, so I think we should uh, start to pull the anchor up off the seabed here. Uh, Zach, is there anything we've missed or anything else you want to oh, yes. rant about? I know uh, you're upset about it, but if you haven't heard the news, Mr. Nolan T. Smith has caught up to you in Canadian trivia. You are hey, seven and seven. It's, you know, folks, the, the thing is, when, when you get on such a slide, like, like I'm on right now, it's, you, you expect to be at the back of the pack. Like, right now, I'm trying to come up with an anecdote or a funny quote or saying or isn't the out of it. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm free-falling. Like, it's... Woo. It's bad. It's real bad. I, I almost took, that's why I took the week off last week, was to try and stop the bleeding. Yeah, well, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I feel like this question plays more to Jerry Lou as the older member, the oldest member of the podcast. This question is, in honor of us doing multiple sports, although I've asked questions about other sports, the question is, which Canadian has the most home runs in MLB history? Is it A, Larry Walker, B, Jason Bay, C, Joey Votto or D Matt Stairs? <laughs> Matt Stairs is Canadian. Oh yeah, ha, that's awesome! I love Matt Stairs. Well, um, could be your pick. Uh, Zach, you're absolutely right. Go ahead, Nolan. Nolan that's not my, gonna go no, first. No, that's not my pick. Nolan, go first. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, a little fun fact: I've met Jason Bay. Have his had his autograph on my uh, youth baseball glove for the longest amount of time. He has a 25% chance of being the most home runs by a Canadian. I think that's how math works. If he is the holder of that <laughs> record, I'm very surprised. Because that guy kind of had a short career, if I'm not mistaken. I well, am going to go. This is tough because four, they're four of the top five. Oh. oh, no kidding? Yeah, so they're all up there. For fun, Zach, do I get bonus points if I can name the fifth? Yeah. Damn it, I can't. I was thinking about it, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting there like, I'm thinking of some people who played for Canadian teams, but I can't I'll tell you who it is. It's <laughs> Justin Morneau. He's fourth. So these oh, are two, okay. three, and five. Oh, okay. That's, hey, a, that's, okay. A list. that's Those are five kick-ass ball players. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very respectable. I think can Canada beat the U.S. butt one year in the World Baseball Classic. So. Yeah, we have some and that's when they had Adam Dunn, and he's not on this list. <laughs> Yeah, Brett, Brett Lowry, Russell Martin. He, he, he had a couple good seasons, but he wasn't much of a, like, a, a consistent power hitter. Great, great no, infield. Yeah. He, was like, he was like a buff Dustin Pedroia. Like, he was amazing. That's very so, good. To answer your question, Zach. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. To answer your question, Zach, I will go with Matt Stairs. Okay. Jerry? Uh, just for fun. I have my answer locked in, but do you have the home run totals? Can you just yeah. read? Can you just read off the numbers uh, one through five and what the homers I hit? No, you have to answer first because. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Larry Walker. I just want to know how. I, I was gonna. I was gonna ascertain how many met. Okay, fifth, Jason Bay with two hundred and twenty-two home runs. That's a lot. Wow. Justin Morneau, two forty-seven. Third, Matt Stairs, two sixty-five. Dang it, Jerry Wan. At first, with 383 home runs, 99 more than Joey Votto, Larry Walker is the correct answer. <laughs> I knew Larry it was Walker. Larry Walker. Why didn't Larry I say Walker Larry Walker? Amazing. Larry Walker is did – he, didn't he get in the hall recently? Because he like, he's been like yeah. the biggest snub of all time. Yeah, he's – Larry That's Walker. That's why I didn't is. say him. I was like, I'm not going to say him because I think Zach's trying to bait me here. Should it? Should I'm not though. Larry Walker raked that guy. Not only did he have the most homers for a Canadian, he um, I think he carries like a two, the three twenty eight batting average or something. I mean, I'm he's surprised Nolan. You didn't say Jason Bay because when I was growing up, he was like the Canadian, like who was hitting the home runs. I really? Just, yeah, I would. I thought Dunn would have been your guy. No. You mean Votto? No. See, Votto. Votto's an excellent hitter and account, excellent count worker, but he's not. I mean, he hits you for keep power, saying Adam power. Dunn. Yeah. He's American. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking about that American-Canadian game where they kept, like, looking to Dunn for power, and he wasn't doing it, and I kept 
My bad. No, sorry, yeah, I wish I Adam Dunn was, was Canadian. You did not need Marcus, but about, about you, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. I know Jason Bay. Jason Bay did not have a very long career, so I knew it wasn't going to be him. Yeah, so does Pat Burrell. Or Burrell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho, I got it wrong. So okay. Anywho, Nolan back to seven and eight. Jerry eight and seven. I was confident that was gonna be the one I was gonna have no correct answers. Because so far one of you guys has gotten it right every time. Like like when it, it, with the exception of pitching stats, Larry Walker owns all best Canadian MLB records out there for hitting. Like that man is just like for average for homers, RBIs, Larry Walker is La Machine. DJ LaMehu? No, 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 no. That's 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 different. He's on he's on your squad, and good good luck to you. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll so long as we beat up the Astros, I don't care. <clears throat> yeah, I so, agreed. <laughs> so, uh, Nolan, do you have anything else you want to plug? Uh, where can we find you? Where can we see you other than at your house? No, on your laptop. No, yeah. Follow me at uh, at Nolan T. Smith. Uh, I do have a. I put it in my article. I have a fair amount of pictures from all those courses I've played um, on my Instagram. Same thing at Nolan T. Smith. So check that out. Um, and yeah, wash your hands. <laughs> Look at those eyebrows too, folks. He's a, he's a handsome devil once we get him up close to the, uh, the camera. <laughs> uh, Zach, anything you want to share with the class before we leave the bell rings? I uh, know. We hope if you're listening to this, you check out our YouTube page because we're going to be providing some other videos outside of the podcast. And uh, like and subscribe because Although everyone says it, it is very important for getting this video to be seen by people. So I hate saying it, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, we're in the, we're in the routine of being routine as long as we get as good as we can get, right? <clears throat> right. Well, fellas, it was really nice talking to you. And as always, you can find me at Jerry Lou Looper on Twitter. I am uh, Callaway underscore Club 84 on PlayStation Network because I'm not working at Band of Dunes right now. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this weather clears up and uh, see you all on the funny pages with some funny videos online, right? Don't all right, worry. we'll see you guys later. Hey, Captain Jenkins, shout out.